All oh, right, uh, welcome back to episode 10 of the Computer Craft Tutorials. So, I found a new way to capture video, and it should be in better quality, smaller file sizes, and I can do longer videos rather than breaking apart. Because um, I was using Craps first, um, which has massive files which clog up your hard drive, and it also splits videos up um, into like 9 or 10 minute chunks, which is a massive pain. Because I don't feel like you know stitching them back together every time again. Um, so I found a new way to do it. I'll link it in the description if anyone's interested in video capturing. Um, it's a little more fiddly than uh, Fraps is, but um, definitely worth it. Uh, so yeah, now I don't have to feel rushed every time I'm trying to make a video as well, so I can take my time. And my YouTube account was upgraded so that I can upload more than 15 minutes as well. Um, so that's great. So let's continue with where we left off. So last episode we dug this hole, we created a small program that will dig down like this, 2x2 two two area. Um, but this episode we're actually going to start a proper project and the goal, what we're going for, is something you could see in the very first video I made, um, which is about this here, massive holes. Um, so it's an army of uh, turtles which would go out and quarry and when they had a full inventory they'd come back, drop off their stuff and continue where they left off and they were controlled by a central computer which told them where they should be digging um, and when they were finished with a job it would give them a new job and you know make them dig at the next spot in line uh, and make sure that you know two turtles weren't digging on the same place and all that stuff um, so that's our end goal and of course after computer craft updated that all got deleted so I've got to start again which is great um, so, here we go. Now, we can't just start off and go, okay, we're going to build this massive program with you know, 10 turtles and a central computer. We're going to break it down a little bit. Um, start with smaller smaller things um, until we can actually have something concrete we can program. So rather than concentrating on an army of turtles, we're going to break it down and just concentrate on one turtle at a time. So we're going to start off with one turtle that's going to mine a quarry we're also going to leave out the central hub, the central computer. We're just going to concentrate on this one turtle here, which is going to mine one quarry for us, which is a certain area. Um, and we have to tell it, so we want we have to tell it where to go, it quarries there, and then it comes back and it's done. That's what we're going to do first. Um, right, so let's hop right in. We're going to create a program called Quarry. So in order to tell the um, <coughs> turtle where to go, uh, where to quarry. It needs to know where it is, of course, because we're going to give it a set of coordinates. So I'm going to say, right, start your quarry here and go for it. So the turtle needs to know where on earth it is. Um, so to do that, I guess it would be a good idea to create some variables that will store its coordinates. So I'll create x chord, z chord, and y coordinate. There we go. So let's just see where it actually is. So we're on minus one six four one nine five and seventy two. Right, so that's good. So we have our coordinates. Now when we move forward or back, um we need to change our X or Y or X or Z coordinate depending on which direction we're looking at. Um so we have to somehow know which way we're looking as well. So what we'll do is we'll create another variable for that, call it orientation. And what we're going to do is we're going to store it as a number. The number's 1 to 4. So it's much easier to do plus 1 or minus 1 um, when you're changing your orientation, when you're going turning left or right. So we'll um, make it 4 right now. Uh, the reason for this, the way the direction I'm looking in now is north. The z direction, or minus z direction, is north. Um, and every time we turn right, we're going to do plus one. So this will be direction number two, which is east. <laughs> east, yeah. Uh, this direction is going to be south, and number three. And this direction is going to be number four, which is west. So we're looking west right now, which is number four. Though it can be useful um, to know the text version of our orientation as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to store that in an array. And the number of our orientation 
is going to correspond to the place in the array. So number one, we said was north. Number two uh, is going to be turning right from north is east. And then the next one's going to be south. Not south, south. And after that, we're going to have a west, which is our current looking direction. There we go. Right, so we have our orientation now. Um, we can look or find out what number means what by you know, going into the orientations array and um, sticking in the orientation number, and it will give us the text version of our orientation because one corresponds to north, two to east, and so forth. Now, of course, when we're turning around, let's say we're on orientation number one, and we turn to the left, which will be minus one, we'll go to zero all of a sudden, and zero doesn't exist in our array. So what we d really need to happen is to go from one all the way back up to four again. So when you turn left from north, you actually are looking west rather than zero, which is nothing. And the same for when you're four and you're turning right, you need to be looking, uh, or sorry, you're west and you turn right, rather than going to 5, when we do plus 1 we need to go back to 1, which is north. Now, there's a way to do this, of course, um, and we're going to do it using the modulo uh, operator, which is a special operator, a special operator which I haven't explained yet, um, and it looks like this, it's the uh, percent sign, which is on your number 5 on your keyboard, use shift 5, unless you have a strange keyboard, it might be somewhere else, but good luck finding it then. Um, so what it does is the following. It take it does a division, right? So it say we do 5 divided by 4, that's 1.25. Now, let's say we're not going to look at um, uh, the 0.25, we're going to leave that out. Um, that's basically what the modulo does, but what it does it, if it, is, is it gives you the remainder. So, when you do 5 divided by 4, 4 fits in 5 once, but you've stuck with this 1, that becomes the 1 divided by 4, which is 0 0.25. But what modulo does is it just returns the 1. So, this is another example. 4 modulo 4 will give 0, because 4 fits in 4 exactly. Um, it's exactly divisible once, uh, which is why there's no remainder, and gives you 0 as a remainder. So let's say we do 3, and go modulo 4. It'll go 3, because 4 doesn't fit in 3 once, so you're stuck with 3, the remainder is 3, and that's what the modulo will return. Right, so I'm going to show you how we're going to use this with our array now. Let's get out of Lua. Edit, query. So what you can do is when you go orientation plus 1, um, let's say we are on 4 at the moment and what will happen is we'll go to 5, right? But if we do modulo 4 it will send us back to 1 again. Now the only issue is that when we're on 4 and do this, let's say we're on 3, we do plus 1 is 4, it will send us back to 0 all of a sudden. Um, while we're working with the numbers 1 to 4, and that's one of the issues with Lua, is because they use the array base numbers 1, so north is always 1, you can't like make it 0 very easily. Um, you're kind of forced to move everything up one number. And let me just show you this in the... Uh, oh, I didn't save it, never mind. Uh, Lua. So we're using the numbers 1 to 4, which means that when we do 1 modulo 4, which is the size of our array, the number of directions. Uh, it sends us right back to 1 again, which is fine, but as soon as we go to 0 modulo 4, we want it to send us back to 4 again, because we did 1 minus 1 is 0, um, but it leaves us on 0, because that's you know with how the modulo works. What we really need it to do is go minus 1 modulo 4, and send us back to 3 again. So we really need our numbers 1 to 4, we need to do the minus 1 and make it 0 to 3, because it'll work perfectly. Let's say 3 is our largest number, and we do plus 1, so we go to 4, modulo 4, it sends us right back to 0 again. So it works very well with the number 0, 
until you know your size of array minus one between that space it will work perfectly as soon as you go over the size of your array it will send you back to zero or if you're exactly on the size of your array I mean and uh, when you go minus one I'll show you it'll send you back to three again so that's what we really want this might sound a little bit complicated um, it is a little bit tricky really but okay so anyway um, we have the regular turtle dot turn left function which just turns the turtle around but what we need to do is we need to also remember which direction we're looking at and also change it so when we turn left we need to do our orientation minus one um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create our own function our own turning function that will also include that functionality I'm just going to call it left and um, so what we need is we need when we turn left our orientation is equal to orientation minus one so when this happens it does it minus one now of course like I just said we're gonna have the problem when we're on one it's gonna send us to zero but we want it to send us back to four again now if we just change our numbers one to four which is our orientations to zero to three we can actually use the modulo very nicely so before we do any of this we're gonna go orientation is all rein whoops minus one so now all our numbers they were one to four now they're zero to three what we can do now is go modulo four so now when we go so what was one before so as that say we're on north which is number one it does minus one so we go to number zero and then it does minus one again here it, so we go to minus one modulo four puts us back up to three now we want to be on four because we just did minus one on the very first line let's go plus one again oh god orientation is equal to orientation plus one all right. So yeah, this is one of the disadvantages of Lua. Oh, I already had an end. Right. <laughs> so quick explanation again. Probably explained it like 15 times now, but it's important that you understand what's going on here. Um, we have the numbers one to four. We're changing these numbers to zero to three, using minus one and any of the numbers. Now, when they're zero to three, we can use the modulo very nicely because when you go to minus one, it sends you back to three, and when you go over three, it sends you back to zero. So we're moving to the left, so we got orientation minus one. Then modulo four, so that if we go over the bounds of our array, it will send us back to either the start or the finish, depending on which direction we're going. And then we go plus one again at the end to make sure that our numbers are one to four again instead of zero to three. And after doing all of that, we can do the actual turn turtle dot turn left and there we go done and we do exactly the same for right orientation orientation minus one so that we're in the zero to three space rather than the one to four space Orientation is equal to orientation. Now going plus one because we're moving to the right. So modulo four. Oops. And then we go plus one again. So that we are in the numbers one to four at the end of that right so this is our turn left and turn right function almost complete so let's do turtle dot turn right there we go all right so now we can test it see how this goes so what we're going to do is we're going to create a program for 
i is equal to 1 to 10 do um, so we'll go left 10 times and we'll print I'm looking to the and then dot dot orientations so this is our array with all the different orientations we can have and we're going to fill in the number orientation and this will give us the text version of the orientation we have so rather than a number we're going to be printing a string which we stored in the array and there we go and we'll do the same for turning right right print I'm looking to the there we go okay we'll just ignore the typos for now there we go right save that we'll run quarry there we go. So turning around south, east, north, west, south, east, north, west, and then he's going the other way, south, west, north, east, south, west, north, east. So that seems to be per working perfectly. Right, great. So when we turn to the left, it changes the number of the orientation, and we can determine which orientation that is by just filling that number in the array. When it moves out of the bounds of our array, so either 0 or 5. It puts us back at the other end of the array using the modulo and same when we turn right. It's exactly the same. So that's all done now. I think I'm going to stop the episode here. Um, if you didn't quite get how this works, <coughs> post in the comments and I can uh, explain it a little bit better maybe. Um, it is a little bit tricky but I uh, hope you all got it. Um, next time <laughs> we'll actually do something with the coordinates here. Now that we um, have our orientation we can know when to do minus one or plus one depending which direction we're looking at when we go forward or backward. So thanks for watching and see you next time.